and welcome to Kids Corner on Armstrong Channel 20. I'm Miss Krista and I'm so excited today to be at Poland Dobbins Elementary School with Miss Mateus and Mrs. DeVito's second grade classes. Have you ever gotten a gift that, I mean, you kind of liked but wasn't really what you wanted? Have you ever gotten a gift that you really didn't want, like a pair of socks? But you kind of needed socks so it was a good gift too but not really what you wanted? And we're going to learn all about gift giving and silver packages, an Appalachian Christmas story by Cynthia Ryland. What we're going to learn is sometimes you get gifts that you want, sometimes you get gifts that you need, and sometimes those gifts that you need are gifts that are going to help you get what you want, even though you didn't really know it at the time. But as you go through the story, you'll see what I mean and you'll learn how to appreciate every gift you get. After this, we're going to make our own packages using paper to make origami boxes. I hope that you love the book and our craft. And if you would like Armstrong to come to your school, have a grown-up email us at channel20, that's channel20, at agoc.com. I think I hear our friends coming now. Let's get ready. Before I give away too much of it, I want to read to you a book. But before I read this book, let me, let me ask you, how many of you have ever made a Christmas list? How many of you have ever made, it, it doesn't have to be a holiday, how many of you have ever made a gift list? Like for your birthday, have you told your parents what you want for your birthday and different things? Most of you? Okay, um, the things you put on your list, who puts on things that are really fun? Who puts on things that are sometimes expensive? <laughs> Who sometimes puts jewelry on their list? Who sometimes puts Xbox on their list? Who sometimes, who sometimes puts an iPod Touch on their list? Who sometimes puts, who sometimes puts a hat on their list? Who sometimes puts gloves on their list? Who sometimes puts underwear and socks on their list? <laughs> so those probably aren't the funnest things in the world, right? Not everyone looks at socks when they get them and go, wow, socks, I can't believe it, you got me socks, this is awesome. You know, it was between socks and an Xbox, but I'm happy I got the socks. So, but sometimes gifts are stuff that you need, right? Sometimes they're not always things that you want, or things that you know that you want, but things that you need. And are you happy to receive gifts like that? Yes. Even if you're kind of let down at first, like, oh, that sucks. Do you make sure that your Aunt Melba knows that you're thankful for the gift? Yes. Anybody have an Aunt Melba? No. Do you really? I do. Wow, that's pretty cool. I just, wow, okay. Tell Aunt Melba we, uh, we mentioned her on the show. So this story is about some kids. Not unlike you, they're about your age. And they receive gifts. And sometimes they learn that even if they're gifts that they didn't really ask for, in the end, maybe somebody knew better than they did what they needed and what they wanted. And this story is called Silver Packages, an Appalachian Christmas Story by Cynthia Ryland. And I hope you enjoy this story as much as I did. There's trains in it. A train comes through in Appalachia every year at Christmas time. And though it doesn't have antlers, nor does the man standing on its rear platform have a long white beard, it may as well be Santa Claus and his slit sleigh for all the excitement it stirs up. People call it the Christmas train, and it has been coming to them for years. Each new child born in the mountains learns to walk, talk, and wait for the Christmas train. It is everyone's delight. The older people remember its beginning. They tell of a rich man who had come traveling through the hills by car many years back. No one knows why he came up into the hills, but why isn't important. What matters is what happened. The man had an accident. His car just took itself right over the side of a ridge, and the man slumped in that car, hurting and scared. Someone came along, 
Some say it was old Mr. Crookshank, but others say it was Betty Pritt. But who came along isn't important either. Whoever it was pulled that rich man out of his car and took him to a house in the hills where he was nursed and cared for until he could make it out on his own. When he left, the rich man tried to give money to the people who had helped him, but they would not accept it. So that rich man left the mountains feeling he owed a great debt. And for the remaining years of his life, he has been repaying this debt from the caboose of the Christmas train he brings into the hills each December. On the 23rd, everybody knows it, the train will slowly wind up and around the mountains. And on the platform of its caboose will stand the rich man in a blue wool coat. He will toss a sparkling silver package into the hands of each child who waits beside the tracks. And for some, it will be the only present they receive. So the train is awfully important. One year, a boy named Frankie stands beside those tracks and waits for the Christmas train. It is very cold and a lot of snow has come down the night before. Frankie's shoes are thin and his feet hurt badly from the cold, but he is determined to wait even if his feet and all the rest of him become ice. Have you ever been so cold that your feet feel like ice? Now this particular boy wants a particular present. Not just any present tossed from the back of that train, a particular present, a doctor kit. He's been waiting for it beside the tracks. Frankie stands there at the tracks, praying for a doctor kit, till he sees the caboose slowly coming up. And when it's just past his nose, he shouts and waves and runs after the train, his icy feet aching. From the rear platform, the rich man of the wool coat sees him. Merry Christmas, he calls, and he tosses into Frankie's hands a sparkling silver package. Frankie stops running. He's out of breath, so he can't yell a thank you. He can only hold tight to his gift and wave to the man and the train disappearing into the mountains. Do you think it's a doctor's kit? Let's see. How many think it's a doctor's kit? Raise your hand. How many think it's something else? Okay, let's see. In the end, you'll find out you're both right. Frankie carries his package home and puts his own name on it and sets it under the family Christmas tree. On Christmas morning, he opens it. It isn't a doctor's kit. It's a cowboy holster set and three pairs of thick red socks. Our friends are having a great time making their origami boxes and origami does take a little bit of focus and a little bit of quiet. So I want to show you how to make your own origami box at home. And origami is simply a traditional style of paper folding to make something. What I have here is a square piece of paper. You can use any size piece of paper you want but have mom or dad help you measure it so that it becomes a square. You can cut off any extra so I have one square here, and then I have another square. I'm going to show you this one that's just slightly smaller than the first. It's actually half an inch smaller, but it's still a square. Okay, so one is going to serve as the bottom of our box, the smaller one. 
and the larger one is going to serve as the top of our box. Now in origami, you make all of your paper folds first. So, I've got one piece of paper and I'm simply going to fold it in half and I'm going to crease really well. Okay, so run your hand across it a couple times. I'm going to open it back up and then I'm going to fold it the other way, just in half. And I'm going to make sure that I crease really well. There, now I've got four little quadrants. One, two, three, four, right there. I'm going to take each point now and fold it into the middle like I'm making four triangles. So there's one right into the middle, and then I'm going to take another one and do the same with it, right into the middle, and then I'm going to take another and do the same. But now it looks like we have a paper airplane, huh? And there, we've got that one right in the middle, and then I'm going to take our fourth right in the middle. And now, while I've got all four folded with all points right in the middle, I'm going to take one side and I'm going to fold it into the middle. So, I took one side and I folded it down so that the flat part was right in the middle. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. So now it looks like it met right in the middle. I'm going to open that part up. I'm going to do the same thing with the other sides. I'm going to fold it right into the middle. I'm going to fold this one right into the middle. Now we have all of our folds done. So I'm going to lift it up like this. And it looks sort of like sort of like a little boat. And our triangles that were inside, I'm going to take two of those out. So that in the end, all I pulled out were the two triangles on the sides. This is where you, it gets a little tricky. You might need an adult's help. Using my four fingers, I'm going to grab it here, and as I push these in, I'm going to push the paper toward me, and then I'm going to push it over. And that makes a perfect side. Now, let's see that again. I'm going to let me get in position here so that I can show Mr. Greg. I'm going to take my four fingers and push in the sides. There's some little triangles there that I'm pushing in. And then I'm going to fold this down. And there you have it. That's the perfect bottom to our box. And as I said, you could do this with any paper. This is just copy paper. And now I'm going to make the top. Remember, the top is a little bit bigger than the bottom, but it's still a perfect square. So it's equal on all sides. I'm going to fold it in half real hard. And then I'm going to open it up. I'm going to fold it in half the other way. There we go. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take my points. I'm going to fold them into the middle so that I have four triangles when I'm done. That point, I'm going to take my point number three. I'm going to take my point number four. And now we have, it looks like a littler square, huh? And then I'm going to take one side and fold it into the middle, just like that. I'm going to take the other side and fold it into the middle, just like that. I'm going to open that part up. I'm going to do the same thing with the two sides I have not done yet. Fold one side into the middle, fold another side into the middle. Now, we open it up so it looks like a boat. We pull out two of our triangles. We make sure we pull this back down. That's got to stay down. And believe me, it might look a little bit hard at first, but with some practice, and you can practice a lot since it's just copy paper, you can make a hundred thousands of these. You can even color the paper beforehand, just like our friends are going to do, our friends are doing now. There, I've got this side in. The key is, is to make it as even as possible. And then I'm going to push in the other sides on the triangles. So that's when we folded the paper, not only did we make some squares, we made a lot of little triangles. And I folded that in. So now I have a lid that's slightly bigger than the bottom because the paper was slightly bigger. And we 
a little bit of encouragement, we're going to put it right on top. And now we have a perfect origami box.